Ladies and gentlemen, today we are doing a Tampa Bay Buccaneers seven round mock draft. Uh, this is based on the first round mock draft that I did on Monday. If you haven't seen it, you can check that out right over here. There is a trade in this, so the picks are going to be a little bit wonky. So again, if you haven't seen that, go watch that video. You'll understand what the trade was, what the compensation is, why the picks are all crazy. Um, we have a first, second, two thirds, a fourth, fifth, and two seventh. I'm not doing compensatory picks. It is what it is. With that being said, let's get it started. With the 22nd pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Joseph Asai, edge rusher, Texas. Um, look, Shaquille Barrett is a pressure machine. He does a good job. He is a free agent. I have to assume we're going to re-sign him. I don't know that for sure. I, I you know, Again, you guys know your team better than I do. Let me know in the comments, but I, I just, I'm assuming he's going to get paid. But even so, JPP is obviously getting much older. We don't have a ton of bodies. Um, and just the general decline of the defensive line overall when you look at Sue and McClendon and uh, some of the other guys, even Golston and Vea, are coming up on contracts pretty soon. So either guys are either going to be going bye-bye or getting very expensive and hurting our cap. So we got to start getting some younger talent uh, along the defensive line, and I'm going to start with the edge rushers getting Joseph Asai out of Texas. With the 53rd overall pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jay Tufele, defensive tackle, USC. Again, a lot of guys leaving. Um, I think we do a really good job up front. Our defensive coordinator is doing a fantastic job scheming guys open. And for that reason, some people might look at this and say that's the one thing we don't need. But the point is it's a strength, and we got to keep it a strength. If we don't start adding more talent, it's going to become a weakness, and we don't want to let that happen. So with guys like Sue leaving, um, we got to make sure that we stay dominant up front. Now that we've done that, we can maybe move on. Maybe there's another one. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But um, it's, it's a necessity that we at least replace some of the guys leaving with the 86th pick in the 2021 nfl draft the tampa bay buccaneers select elijah moore wide receiver ole miss so i'm not really entirely sure what the plan is with brown and godwin who are free agents um and and mike evans is still there but he doesn't seem like he's been his same exact elite self so it's kind of an iffy one in terms of you know if if Mike Evans is fine, and we're going to re-sign these guys. We probably don't need a wide receiver, but it definitely feels like at this point in time, it's 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 an option, right? It's one of those strengths that's going to quickly become a weakness if we just ignore this, and I don't want to ignore it. So, again, jump in the comments section. Let me know what's going on with your wide receiver position, what you know of as far as the plans or what you think is going to happen. But as of right now, where I'm sitting, Elijah Moore makes some sense. With the 90th overall pick, thanks to a trade, go check out that video, I'm trying to tell you, in the third round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Tyler Linderbaum, offensive center, Iowa. So I'm, I'm a pretty big fan of the Tampa Bay offensive line. I think you've got some great players there, but center is definitely a big question. Um, Ryan Jensen and A.Q. Shipley, first of all, Shipley is in the final year of his contract in 2020. Ryan Jensen is in the final year of his contract in 2021. I don't know if either of these guys are that good of football players, period. I mean, both of them have abysmal pass blocking grades, including A.Q. Shipley. He didn't play very much, but still, Ryan Jensen has allowed 22 pressures so far this season, which is horrific. Just as a reference, and I've used this a lot, um, Corey Lindsley has allowed two on the season. Jensen has allowed 22. Um, so again, I'm, I, I do like the offensive line, but center is, is a massive need, and so we're going to address that here. With the 117th pick in the fourth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Desmond Ritter, quarterback, Cincinnati. So look, this isn't just we got to get a replacement for Tom Brady, although, you know, it doesn't hurt to take a swing at it. Maybe we found a guy in the fourth round. I know there's a lot of hype about Ritter. Obviously, if he's as good as a lot of – if the hype continues, he's not going to be a fourth-round pick, so that's kind of out the window. But um, even if we don't like that, Blaine Gabbert and Ryan Griffin are both free agents, and so do we want to invest a bunch of money in our backups or should we just go out and get somebody, right? Maybe we hang on to Gabbert and we just get uh, Red Ritter to come in as our number three. We coach him up with Tom Brady and, and Gabbert and maybe see if we got something there. If not, then we focus later on. But but we're at a point now where we don't have a quarterback in the very near future. we got to at least start trying to take a couple swings at this, even if it's a swing and a miss. I'd rather swing and a miss at a quarterback and at least try than go out and get, what, a linebacker or something? Just we got to try. With the 150th pick in the fifth round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select... 
Kylan Hill, running back, Mississippi State. Um, I like Ronald Jones. I think he's really starting to come on strong. There was some concern early on that maybe he was going to be kind of a bust. Um, obviously, when you got your new coach, the thought was he's going to be able to figure it out, and it looks like he is. Ronald Jones is coming on strong. But Fournette, McCoy, Barner, Logan, all free agents, every single one of them. So we need more bodies. Again, I understand we can sign one or two of these guys, but the point is we, we, we can't just keep paying everybody. We can't, well, we'll just pay them. Well, we'll just pay them. Well, we have no money. We got to get some younger talent in here so that we can let guys go that we don't need. We certainly don't need to be paying Fournette and McCoy. If we want to keep some of the other guys around, fine. But let's try to get a guy that can come in and be a legit number two behind our uh, guy, Ronald Jones. That's what we're shooting for in Kylan Hill. If he ends up being better than Ronald Jones, great. But that's not really our goal. He's going to be our number two behind Ronald Jones. With the 214th pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Corey Durden, defensive tackle, Florida State. Um, so I lied when I said maybe I was going to be done. But look, I, again, there's a lot of guys leaving. Um, it's the seventh round, so I don't know exactly how much we're going to get out of this, but it's a body, right? It's a body that's going to come in. He's going to be able to hopefully contribute a little bit and provide a little bit of depth for us. We'll see what happens. But again, seventh round, we're just getting bodies. With the 220th pick in the seventh round of the 2021 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Anthony Hines, linebacker, Texas A&M. So, look, I know you, you got a great duo over there um, with David and White, but David is on the way out. Uh, he's not going to be around forever. He's not going to be playing until he's 40. So we've got to start looking at replacements. I don't. Again, it's the seventh round, pick 220. We're at the back of the seventh round. I don't know that we're getting a top-tier elite player necessarily. But we still need bodies. So he's going to come in. He's going to compete. It's the best I can I can provide to you. Um, that's what it is, man. I, I wish we didn't end in the seventh round because it's always so anticlimactic at the end. But it is what it is. That's going to do it, folks. That is a seven-round mock draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. If you like the video, please drop a like. Please subscribe. Hit the little bell notification because I do these uh, right now every single day. Uh, we got a mock draft, first round mocks coming out on Monday, so just make sure you don't miss that. Hit the little bell notification. Um, there's a little join button if you want to support the channel. You can do so. There's a couple little perks there you can check out for yourself. Just just look at it, see what the video is kind of an explainer for you. But uh, otherwise, we're done. Have a great day.